Hi guys, Ms. Mac here again. I'm going to talk to you today about measures of spread. So if you remember yesterday, we reviewed measures of center and that was mean, median, and mode, basically all describing the middle of a set of data. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what we call measures of spread, which instead of focusing on the middle is obviously how spread out. How wide is the set of data we're talking about? So some of the words that we are going to talk about today, you've heard before, and some of them you, you may not have ever heard about. So we're going to go through this first example, and I'm just going to kind of point out what some of these terms mean. So first of all, we have what we call the minimum. Now, minimum, you know, means the lowest. So obviously the minimum is the lowest value in a set of scores. So when you look at these student quiz scores, notice that I already have them arranged smallest to largest. And if you're going to do any of these measures of spread, you have to make sure that they're started out that way to begin with. So the minimum is the very lowest, and that is our four. So this minimum is our very lowest. Likewise, the maximum is the very highest. So in this case, our maximum is 20. When we're talking about the range, the range is actually the high score or high number minus the low number, always. So the max minus the min. And in this case, that would be 20 minus four. So our range is a total of 16. So there is a distance of 16 between our highest number and our lowest number. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the quartiles. Now quartile sounds like quart or quarter, which means four. So basically what we're doing is we're split, splitting this data up into four equal sections. So I'm gonna start by finding the median. And the median, remember, is the middle number when they're arranged smallest to largest. So I'm going to kind of put dots here instead of actually crossing them out just so that I can see what I'm dealing with. And I notice the right here, this is my median. The median is also called quartile two. Quartile two and median mean the same thing. So the median is that middle number when arranged from low to high. Now, to get quartile one and quartile three, we're going to kind of do the same thing, but quartile one is the middle of the bottom half of the data. So we're going to be looking, we're not going to use the 14, the Q2, the median, look at the middle of the bottom half. So I'm going to put little X's now. I'm going to work my way to the middle of the bottom half. And that is this six. So that is my first quartile, which we call Q1. So that's quartile one or the first quartile. Doing the same thing on the right to get the upper quartile. This is the lower quartile, the upper quartile. We do not use the median. We're going to again work our way to the middle. And that would be Q3. So notice what we have done here. Let me get rid of a few lines. Oops, I'm not on my eraser. I don't want a clear page. I just want to get rid of these lines. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, all right, guys, if we look right here, this is the bottom fourth of our data. Here's the second to the bottom, second to the top, and the top set of data. So you'll notice there are actually two data points in each one of these sections. So we have divided this data into quartiles, fourths, okay? So now what we can do is we can look at this and we can talk about not only what the quartiles are, but what we call the interquartile range. So we know the range was the high number minus the low, which was the max minus the min. The interquartile range is going to be Q3 minus Q1. So instead of going from the very high to the very low, we're only looking at this middle section. So Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, Q3 is 19, Q1 is six. So 19 minus six 
is 13. So we call the interquartile range or the IQR is 13. So it's the middle part of this, not the whole range, the middle range. Okay, one other thing I want to point out, let me get rid of a couple things here, is that because we have this divided into quartiles, quarter meaning a fourth, I know that this section right here represents 25% of my data. It's a fourth of it. I know that right here is 25% of my data. Right here is 25% of my data. And right here is 25% of my data. So you can see that each section represents the same amount. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at another example. If I take a look at, not that example, this one, heights of the students in our class in inches. Now, I've already arranged those, I said, um, from low to high, which they need to be in order to do this. So if I ask you to find the minimum, let's see if I can get where my pen is. Somehow I lost my pen. Not there, maybe. No, not that pen. We'll go back in here now. There we go. Okay, so if I find my pen, the minimum, remember, is the lowest number. So in our case, the minimum would be 50. And I want you to kind of do this with me as we go. The maximum is the very highest, which is 70. And then if I need to find my range, it's always my max minus my min or my high minus the low. So if I do 70 minus 58, that would give me 12 for my range. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. What we need to do next is find Q1, Q2, and Q3. Easiest way to do this is always start by finding the median first. So again, I'm just going to use dots and I'm going to work my way to the middle. And my middle is a 64. That's my Q2. So my median is 64. Now to get my Q1, I have to work my way to the middle of the left half. So I'm going to go back over here to the left half and work my way to the middle. And when I get to here, I notice that I have two middle numbers. So to find my Q1, remember, I have to add those two values and divide by two. And that is going to give me 61.5. And that is my Q1. So my Q1 is 61.5. Likewise, I'm going to get my Q3. I'm going to work my way to the middle. Notice I have two numbers here. But if I add 65 plus 65 and divide by 2, I'm just going to get 65. And that is my Q3. So my Q3 is 65. And then remember to get my interquartile range. Basically what I'm doing is I'm looking for the range. Let's go purple. The range from my Q1 to my Q3. So if I do 65 minus 61.5, I get 3.5. So my middle range is 3.5. So from here to here is 3.5. Okay, so that's how you find the measures of spread. We're talking about how spread out the data is um, from low to high or, or from Q1 to Q3. Now, let's look at one more example. So this is the kind of question that we might ask you, not just to calculate them, you need to know how to calculate them, but if we take this same example that we just did, and I ask you some questions, it says the top 50% of the student heights are above blank inches. So when I look at this, I have to remember the idea behind these quartiles is that down here is 25% of my data. Right here, 25% of my data. Right here, 25% of my data. And right here, 
25% of my data. So when it says for this first question, the top 50% of student heights are above blank inches. So when I look at this, 50% would be this top, whoops, I didn't switch colors, this top half right here. And all of those are above or actually at 64 inches. Okay, let me get rid of that. Switch colors this time. It says blank percent of students are above the height 61.5. Well, 61.5 is here, and if I want to know how many people are above that, that's three of the quartiles, that would be 75%. It says 25% of students are below the height of how many inches? Well, 25%, the bottom quarter, there's exactly 25% below 61. 0.5 inches. And then lastly, it says the interquartile range is blank inches, which means what? So if I go back and I want to find my interquartile range, remember what that is, is my Q3 minus my Q1. So 65 minus 61.5, remember, is 3.5 inches. So what does that actually mean? That means that 50% of my students are between 61.5 inches and 65 inches. So the difference between um, the, the quartile one and quartile three is 3.5 inches. It also means that exactly 50%, because that's my interquartile range, the middle 50, of the students have heights I'm going to run out of room within three point five inches of each other. So not only do you have to find these values, you kind of have to know what these different things mean. And so it's a way to describe sets of data by just looking at the um, how spread out they are. That's a whole idea of measures of spread. We're going to have a little bit of practice with this. And if you have any questions at all, please, please, please ask and get some help so that you can um, understand. Thanks. Have a great day.